welcome everybody. Um, this is a talk on the Trail Stewardship Initiative, one of the um, things that was up on our lunchtime discussion that the OSM US has started. And this is something that I've been helping lead for um, a bit ever since we got an email from a person that was working in Canyonlands that said, Dear Open Street Map, we are having really large issues with um, trail patterns and we the use on our trails in the back country because we have environmental degradation, we have safety issues, but unofficial information is spread widely when we have people that are using OSM as the base of the maps, and we know that you map everything on the ground, but there is this thing where we don't actually need people to use those trails. And so we responded to this particular individual and invited her to give a mappy hour, which you are welcome to look on the new website, it's linked there, and see her presentation about the particular challenges that they were facing. And through that, we began a discussion. We had a platform to form the Trails Working Group. And why, why does all of this matter from the context of um, safety and environmental degradation? And one of the people that joined this Trails Working Group is TJ Broom, who is with the US Forest Service. And so he is one of our on the ground land managers. And he's just gonna talk about what the challenge is from his perspective. Yeah. So. I'm sure a lot of you um, witnessed this too. Um, recreation participation we're seeing in the Forest Service and other agencies has been increasing for a while. During the pandemic, there was a huge explosion. I'm sure you saw it on your trails that you were on, lots of people showing up everywhere. Um, so along with that, how people are getting there for the most part is they're relying on mobile applications on their phone that are suggesting hikes and having map data that they're using to get there across a number of platforms. Though a lot of those platforms are sourcing their data on OpenStreetMap data. Um, when that data isn't rendered in a way that really provides the information that that user is needing for their hike to be successful, it's inaccurate, it's kind of misleading, then that can lead to impacts on wildlife, vegetation, visitor safety, um, and then that just um, ac equity access, making sure that uh, people are getting to the places that they're trying to go and have the experience that, that they're trying to have. How was that? <laughs> so we have the, um, the Trails Working Group has involved into the Trails Stewardship Initiative, and we've already been doing some work with having three different um, kinds of people at the table, people like TJ, people um, that work with all trails, people that work with Onyx, different, yes, wave. <laughs> and also volunteer mappers from the OSM community as well. And so one of the things that we've been doing, and this, this was that presentation that I was referring to as well, but this is an example of what she sent us, where there's this trail, the Salt Creek um, Canyon Trail, which has all sorts of wonderful tags on it and information associated with it. And then this trail over here has nothing but highway equals path on it. And so therefore different kinds of renders based on how they're like, okay, we have a trail there. That's, that's kind of the knowledge we're going to use. We're just going to put it on there. And if you look at the official NPS map, that trail is not on their map whatsoever. So our working group thought about this um, and, and talked about tagging schemas, looking at the availability of key value pairs that are already out there and what we could do to help solve this problem and also talk about what discussions with the people that are building the apps and what the data actually looks like. And so we've got some um, a lot of progress in this where our um, group is, a lot of different people have participated. We did a pilot project in the area that TJ is well familiar with. And these are some of the symbols of people that have already been part of the discussion. So it's a really, really nice group. 
And it's just building that communication platform, I think is one of the biggest successes of the Trails Working Group, which is now going into this initiative. But we looked at the tags. I'm gonna leave this up here briefly, but not dive into it too much. Yeah. Because the main thing to the, yeah, to the second that we ended up working with is that if we look at some of the application tags that we can have, informal equals yes is something that can very easily be put onto a lot of trails if they are social trails or trails that were um, not built with approval of the land manager, but happen to be there. And it's important to see these because of search and rescue issues. It's good to have this data existing, right? But we don't necessarily want them rendered on the map the way that just highway equals path does. So if we can add some of this content, then the people that do that rendering can take this kind of information, which we did in our first pilot, and um, come back up with success. So this is a snapshot um, from all trails of a before and after in the pilot area of everything is highway equals path. Here's things with informal equals yes on it so that when you zoom in, you can still see those things. But if you are planning a visit to this area and you're just looking at trails and a quick cursory thing to try and figure out where you can go, the um, social trails are not prominent. They're not going to draw as many visitations to that area. So with that, I will hand it over to Maggie for our next steps. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, PJ. Um, yeah, I mean, that pilot showed us that, you know, how many people here have ever tagged something in Open Street Map? You know, thank you. <laughs> you know, you, you add that one little extra piece of information to a building, to a road, you know, is it a residential versus a commercial? I mean, that adds some incremental value to any feature that we touch. Um, and being able to decide upon these, you know, informal yes, it was a long conversation, <laughs> but, you know, being able to try that out, what, what happened with this this last image? Um, we don't have the last one. With the partnership of all of these folks coming together in this room enabled us to do is say, okay, we're going to do this on the mapping side, but because you know, we had all trails and forest service in the room, we could send it back to the land manager and say, did this help you? So to me, that was one of the most valuable parts of this pilot was not just saying we mapped a thing, cool, let's look how look how good it looks. But like we not to say it didn't have any impact on the ground. So that's really what we were also trying to do. Complete that circle of conversation so that we don't just make these decisions behind the map and we're able to really make sure that it, it helps everyone out there on the on the trail. So moving forward, uh, we, we mapped a small area of the country. It had a few different uh, landowners, which is complicated. You know, uh, Bureau of Land Reclamation and you know, Forest Service and the Park Service, and there's a lot of non-agreement on how everything is even tagged in those agencies. So we're trying to kind of walk slowly along our trail to say, this is how we're going to do it so we will start to be more interoperable with all these different agencies and speak to their needs. Um, so we have the goal to map the entire country's trail. Yeah, right? <laughs> But, you know, how do you eat a big giant cake, right? A piece at a time. Um, you know, we all know the United States is a country. So we started thinking, how do we plan a next pilot? And what does it mean to encompass? You know, we, we tested a few different concepts in this first pilot. What are we going to do next? Um, and here's just a few of those things. Um, program. You know, we have a, a great thing going with the Sales Working Group, but you know, we have what, 75 people? How many more people are we going to need to map all those trails or update all those trails in the United States? Many, right? Um, so we started thinking where do we start? Uh, so within our working group, we already have a lot of stakeholders within the Northwest. Um, so we started focusing in on that. So we thought, let's try to talk. It's not the Colorado level of recreation, but not no offense to you, 
But so we're looking at, at how do we improve programming? How do we educate them? How do we bring the people into open street map? But also, what tools would we need to support this kind of what what exists already? What do we need to create? What do we need to be thinking about that impact? When you take those millions of people using our public lands and introduce them to this concept if, if they are in. How do we educate even land managers and the fact that people can edit these trails? So we're trying to take all that and condense it into our next pilot, think about those things and incrementally address all of those things. Um, community growth, adoption and stability. Well, we don't want to just throw a bunch of edits into OpenStreetMap either. We want to make sure we're intentional and then we create good data so we need validation. Um, and then what are the priority areas? So if you've got a park that sees like millions of visitors every year and they're going off trail and they're getting hurt, you know, is the safety of a concern, that's a priority. Is there a lot of, you know, endangered uh, ecosystem? We want to keep people off that. So we're, we're going to try to prioritize area by safety, by environmental impact, um, and by demand. Yeah. So these were some of the um, things Maggie already men mentioned is the tools and programming and that community and adoption. How do we build that scaling for this whole thing to grow and keep that communication platform open and, and figure out a way for new land managers to be able to work with us and communicate with us easily and work with tools that are easy to do. So. We're going to um, start opening this up when we build that structure. If you have questions about it, we have a um, email that is dedicated to the uh, Trails Stewardship Initiative, which is just trails at openstreetmap.us. There is also a trails channel on our OSM US Slack. And we have a lot of people to think that are part of this, but if you do want to go into, this actually goes to the old website because the new one just got launched today, but we have a QR code that launches to a lot of information that was building. You can go through this or go to our it'll new website. Work. still work. We didn't change it, that. Then. Okay, awesome. Um, <laughs> use this QR code and you will be able to find all sorts of information blog posts about our progress that we just gave a really quick summary on. We're always looking for new members of the working group as well. Um, and also... Yeah, ideas. And then we have our, our birds of a feather session here and then 4 p.m. Round table. <laughs> yep. Uh, a round table.